Hello again and welcome to the Larry Shiat Show presented by Union Wireless. Well, it was quite a week for the Wyoming Cowboys. A couple of tough road tests and the Cowboys didn't win either game, coach, but they came up pretty darn big, I thought. Uh, just great games at New Mexico and at Nevada, Las Vegas. Let's start with that New Mexico game. It'd go to overtime again. That seems to be the thing between these two teams this year. No satisfaction when you come up short. Two points to an elite team on the road, 15,000 people or otherwise. However, with that said, uh, kudos to the coaching staff. You know, I didn't like my seat back at home, but they did a phenomenal job, actually in all three games, in particular in the pit in front of 15,000. You, you put yourself in a position, these young men put themselves in a position to, uh, to score the winning basket with five seconds to go. You play pretty good basketball. And despite the fact we fell short, uh, I know months ago, whether it was a doubter or whether it was the best fan, speculation was without these three guys, Martinez, Gilmore, and Washington, there's no way we would be competing with the elite teams. We've done it all year, it's not a surprise. We just need to get our due. Well, of course, in the New Mexico game, the Cowboys had to go without Josh Adams and Coach Shy, and uh, yet still stepped up very, very big. I, th I just thought it was a great game. Well, the first half, the coaches really utilized the bench. We got in foul trouble. Jack Benz came in, played eight minutes in the first half. Matt Sellers came in, played two minutes. Trey Washington, our rookie, came in, played six minutes. And they sort of overcame some early foul trouble. And then it was same old, same old. In the second half, it just seems like our guys are going to will themselves to put them in position to win. Three times we've done it, five times we haven't. And so in the pit, big crowd. I thought we stood the test of time. Well, then on to Nevada, Las Vegas. The Cowboys have traveled to the Thomas and Mack Center for a Saturday night game. And uh, boy, here we go again. That was just a, a outstanding basketball game. You uh, surprised the Cowboys uh, by coming down. And uh, I, it was a wonderful thing. I happened to just be standing outside the door when you uh, came and kind of surprised the team. You were there. Josh Adams uh, was back on the floor for the Cowboys. And boy, what a basketball game. Cowboys had the basketball late in that one, too. Well, uh, we talked to the team both Friday and Saturday at length about the fact that we were going to get their best emotional uh, shot early. Uh, they'd come off a, a, a weak performance on the road. They're back in town. It's going to be at least 15,000 in there Saturday night in Vegas. I don't have to describe that. Not a lot of Wyoming fans there, but we knew that was how the game would start, and it did. Indeed, they knocked in some shots. We were down 14-6. Our guys collected themselves again on the defensive end, and somehow they would grind their way back to a two-point halftime deficit. I thought the second half, Dave, one of our best halves of the year. We just willed ourselves again and defended so well that they never could run away from us. And then that stop with 47 seconds to play. We needed a stop down two. We got it. Derek Cook comes up with a big loose ball. We got the ball with 30 seconds. Try to get something for Riley, get a little discombobbled, so I called time. I wanted to make sure they knew what what are we going to do when we score the basket? What are we going to do? God forbid we miss. And then I gave them two choices offensively, and they were unanimous. They wanted to go with our smash play to Nance. They did it very well. The ball didn't go in, so I guess in some eyes that's a failure, but I could not lie to them in the locker room. I told them I'm proud. I told them they're a heck of a team. And I said, quite honestly, every individual in this, in this locker room has gotten better the last two months. That's the sign of a good team. Well, isn't that the truth? And the Cowboys have just matched all these outstanding teams in this league. The UNLV game I thought was so indicative of that. The Cowboy defense just spectacular at this point. And, and really the Cowboy offense coming up, kind of balancing out now. But that defense, let's see, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think you held UNLV to about 30 below their average in this in this game? We did on their court, which is even more significant. You know, I think it started, Dave, back in November. You're in Columbus in front of 15,000. You're in Boulder in front of a packed house. You're playing elite teams, even SMU when we played here, although not many fans at the game, we knew SMU was a top 20 team. And that, I think, provided our team with a little inner arrogance that, you know what, we can. I don't know when but we can. Yeah. Well, more to come on the Larry Shiat Show presented by Union Wireless. Stay with us more after this.
smartphones. Your connection to the world. The possibilities are unlimited, and your plan should be too. With unlimited cube from Union Wireless, get talk, text, and high-speed data without limits. Only from Union Wireless. Welcome back, everybody, to our Cowboy segment. Our man today, Riley Grabo, having a great season for the University of Wyoming. And Riley, I know uh, uh, there are some people probably at the start of the year not quite sure how the Cowboys would be this year. And here we are. Uh, this is as competitive a team as there is in the Mountain West. It's already proven that uh, big game tomorrow night. But uh, you've got to be very proud at the way this team has progressed and the way you have personally. Oh yeah, I'm way proud of everybody on our team, even the guys who you know are called practice players or whatever who don't get in. Uh, you know, they've done a great job with us in practice, getting us ready, getting us prepared. And I think that's uh, I think that's the biggest key that about our team that's so good is that we're prepared every game and we're ready and we're focused and we go out there and we play together. You know, I don't think I've ever been around, and I've been around a while, but I've, I've never been around a, a Wyoming team like this one. This is one of the most unique. Uh, didn't matter whether the head coach was around, didn't matter which uh, coach was in charge for the day, it was business as usual and, and uh, no drop off. Uh, how do you get to be consistent like that? I don't know. Uh, you know, our team is very connected together. Uh, you know, we all play, uh, we all hang out, we all play together, we all practice together, we hang out, you know, we go everywhere together. And, uh, you know, making that camaraderie or, uh, you know, just being so close to each other actually makes a difference on the court. Because, you know, when Coach Shy went down, you know, it felt different that he wasn't there but it still kind of felt like the same basketball game, you know, us together, five versus five. So, uh, you know, it's great that uh, we have that piece. Now, I know fans would be curious about two very difficult, gut-wrenching losses over the weekend on the road. Um, it, it, the first one certainly didn't affect the second game, came right back out and played the same. Uh, do, you, do you feel like you're okay now? Is, is the team still okay, even though you suffered those two tough losses? Oh yeah, I think, I think we're fine. Um, you know, it's, it's bad and it's sad to lose two games in a row, especially on the road, and you kind of want to get one of those at least. Uh, but you know, it was a close game, we fought, we competed. Uh, you know, the balls just didn't drop our way in either game, and they were close, and it's just like every week, every week I say to myself, you know, it's going to be a close game, it's going to come down to the wire. So we just got prepared, and I think we will, and, you know, just go after this next one. And the next one is a big one. The Aztecs here tomorrow night. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a fun game, you know, top team in the nation. Uh, we get to play at our home court. I don't think we go there during the year. So it's good we only get to play them once, and especially on our home court so our fans can watch. Um, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. Uh, it's going to be a great opportunity for us. Riley, you had a little tiny little piece there where uh, they were dropping for you. And I know watching you and your dad after the Air Force game talk about it. And uh, I love the relationship, by the way, you have with your dad. I'll ask you that in a minute. But um, how, how does one overcome that? It, it was a, a point there. They were right around. They were spinning in and out. They weren't going in. How do you mentally handle that? Uh, it's hard. Uh, you know, seeing, you know, every shot that I've taken this year has felt good and has looked good. And I thought it was going in every time. And you know that stretch was a that stretch was a struggle. But my dad just kept telling me, you know, keep focused, keep getting in the gym, keep getting shots up, and that's what I did. And you know, to have a dad like him is just it's it's incredible, really. Yeah. You know, through the years, I haven't seen many young guys or gals, for that matter, have uh, the family support you do, and, and uh, especially with your dad, Craig. I, I, he comes to almost all of the games. Uh, what does it mean to you to have uh, your dad there like that and, and uh, talk about your relationship with him? Uh, words can't describe how much it means to me to see my dad, you know, in the stands, always cheering for me, always wanting me to succeed whichever way, you know, win or lose. He just wants me to succeed in any way I do and have fun doing it. And, you know, he's, he's been my coach since about 
three years old, maybe four years old since I could even walk, play basketball. So, I mean, him just going out there, he says it's a playground game, it's a kid's game, it's for entertainment. Uh, you know, don't put too much pressure on yourself because, you know, people buy tickets to come watch you play. It's for entertainment. So, uh, you know, I try to go out there with the mindset of just having fun. Uh, playing loose, and always when I see him up in the stands, I always have to always have to smile because he'll smile back. So it's good though. You know, uh, the coaching staff says you're a coach on the floor, and uh, I, I think that's awesome. Uh, that basketball IQ came from your dad, or oh, yeah. where did where did that come from? Oh yeah, my dad, my brother, my grandpa, my whole family, my grandma, my mom. I mean, oh, we're just a big basketball family, and we talk about basketball all the time. You know, every time we get a chance to dinner, you know, just hanging out, watching TV, it's always about basketball or any basketball game is on, we're watching it. So, you know, we're all about basketball and I think that's how I learned because we would get in uh, specific situations and see them and play them and learn about them and my dad would tell me, you know, this and that. So, I mean, I give all my credit to my family and my dad. Could we assume at some point you might be a coach when basketball is over? What would you like to do uh, with your career? I don't know. I haven't given it much thought. I'm gonna play. <clears throat> I'm gonna play till I can't play no more. So, you know, if that day comes tomorrow, a year, two years, so be it. But yeah, it would be nice to be a coach. All right, Riley Grabo, one of the great Cowboys, and uh, putting together quite a career. Congratulations. Thank you for having me. Okay, buddy. Yep. Dave Walsh will be back with the Scatter Report on San Diego State tomorrow night and San Jose State on Saturday. When you book at FlyFrontier.com, you get great stuff. Like exclusive fares, more miles. A free carry-on. You even get to pick your seat. And everyone likes to pick their seat. I know I do. Once I picked my seat right smack dab in the middle of... Stop! Stop. Grizz, we're talking about picking your seat on the plane. Wait, you pick your seat on the plane? Now that's disgusting. Get more perks, lower fees, and a free carry-on. Book today at FlyFrontier.com. Welcome back to the Larry Shiat Show, presented by Union Wireless. Well, the Cowboys have those two California teams in the Mountain West this week. They'll be right here on this floor Tuesday night against the San Diego State Aztecs, ranked fifth in the country. Then on Saturday afternoon, it's out to California to take on the San Jose State Spartans. And who better to find out about these two Mountain West foes than assistant coaches Scott Duncan and Jeremy Shiat, the associate head coach, Scott Duncan, has the San Diego State Aztecs. And I know that this is a, a team that is very talented. And uh, not only do they do it to, at the offensive end, but boy, they're good defensively. And that's about as much as we know. Tell us more about what makes the San Diego State Aztecs so special, Coach. Well, I think you touched on it defensively. They are in the top five in virtually every category, top five in the country, not top five in the Mountain West, top five in the country in virtually every category defensively. They're long, they're athletic, uh, they really, really uh, guard you, and they rebound very, very well. It's uh, maybe the best team that we've played since we've been back to Wyoming. Well, uh, the Cowboys kind of similar defensively. I know they're very close in the con one, two in the conference. Defensively, you get them on this floor and this has been a place where the Cowboys have upset nationally ranked teams. Uh, seem to get their best shot and the Cowboys' best shot. It seems. Well, you know what? I think we really do. We've played so well in virtually all of our Mountain West games, but in particular the last two uh, games at New Mexico, a loss in overtime, uh, had a good look to win it with four seconds to go, and then, um, you know, a two-point game at UNLV. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're that close, uh, Dave. Hopefully Tuesday we can, you know, get over the hump on Tuesday and then that would give us some momentum to finish out the season. Well, make no mistake about it, the Aztecs have some uh, supremely gifted athletes. Uh, I think Xavier Thames is about as good yeah. as it gets and Josh Davis, he's a new addition that really has 
made them even better. Well, and they have quite a few guys back from last year's team. Obviously, they missed Jamal, Jamal Franklin, who's graduated into the NBA, but all of their players have improved. Uh, Thames right now would probably be the leading candidate for the player of the year in the conference. Uh, Josh Davis is kind of a combination of Leonard Washington and Cameron Berstow from New Mexico. Very, very, very gifted player. And the guy that's probably the most improved player on their team is Winston Shepard, who was a freshman last year. He's a 6'8", 1, 2, 3, 4. He plays four positions on the court and has really improved their game, so or his game. So uh, we definitely have our work cut out for us on Tuesday, but uh, we're due, hopefully. Absolutely. Cowboys in San Diego State, of course, right here in the Arena Auditorium. The tip-off time is at 9 p.m. Tuesday night, Wyoming and San Diego State. And then it's on the road again, Coach Shiat, as the Cowboys take off for San Jose, California. That's a Saturday afternoon game. We'll remind everybody, 3 o'clock Mountain Time, those two teams will tip it up. And I, I, I use this term only because they haven't won in the Mountain West Conference, but this is a pretty good basketball team, and you know that the Spartans are going to be hungry for the Cowboys. You're exactly right, Dave. You know, and, and, and looking back onto the first time we played San Jose here in the AA, it was actually about a five-point game with six or seven minutes to go. And I think the, the thing about San Jose that makes them dangerous uh, for our team as opposed to some other teams in the league uh, they are one of the best teams in our conference at shooting the ball from three. And when you play in the 50s and 60s, like the Wyoming Cowboys do, uh, three three-pointers, uh, that's a lot of points if, if they get that in a quick amount, you know, a quick stretch, especially playing on their home court. The first time we played them, I think our, our team did a great job defensively on their top three players, uh, Jaleel uh, Williams, Devontae Wilson and Rashad Muhammad. And I think it's going to take a great effort to kind of shut down their big three again, um, especially from behind the arc. Uh, because, you know, make no mistake, there have been games when they've hit 14 and 15 threes in a game. And uh, with the way that we play defense, we, we just can't allow that to happen. Do you expect to see many changes in the way they go about things? These are two teams that played before. And as you said, they sure put up the threes here. Uh, weren't going down like they'd like them to. I know that Cowboy defense has a lot to do with that. Do you expect to see anything different in the way they do things this time around? You know, Dave, they're really not doing that many different things. I mean, obviously, they're still a very guard-dominated uh, team. Uh, they like to push the pace whenever they can, and obviously we expect them to try to push the pace and create a little more tempo at home versus being uh, here in Wyoming at, and playing at altitude. Um, but again, I, I don't think it's going to be any different than, than any of our other games have been in the league and probably come down to the last four or five minutes. And uh, hopefully, you, you know, with our team, it'll, it'll start and end with defense and we can get a win on the road. Boy, and uh, you talk about winning on the road. This is a Cowboy team that certainly is road tested. I mean, they've performed so well, been in so many situations on the road already. That shouldn't be a big problem. I know you're expecting the Cowboys to play well in San Jose. No, I think the great, the great thing about our team, whether it's been on the road or at home, whether there's been 100 people in the stands or 15,000 at the pit, our guys play very similarly. They don't let the emotion of the game dictate the way they play. And obviously, you know, playing uh, on Tuesday here at the AA, hopefully it'll be a different atmosphere than it is uh, Saturday and our guys are going to have to make the adjustment and, and, and hopefully they'll you know show some consistency. You bet. Well there you have it. That's the word on the San Diego State Aztecs and the San Jose State Spartans. That's who the Cowboys have this week. We got it from associate head coach Scott Duncan and assistant coach Jeremy Shiat. We have more to come on the Larry Shiat Show presented by Union Wireless right after this. Welcome back to the Larry Shiat Show, presented by Union Wireless. Well, another big week in the Mountain West Conference for the Wyoming Cowboys. One at home, one away. That one at home on Tuesday night is most interesting, like the number five team in the country, the San Diego State Aztecs, coming to play right here on this floor. Got them right where you want them, huh, Coach? Well, it is indeed a great opportunity for us. You know, 
that's why a lot of these guys come to play in the Mountain West. It's been an extraordinary league the last three seasons in particular. You got a unanimous uh, in both polls, top five team coming in here, deservedly so. They've acquired some great talent. They have four transfers in their top seven, and those guys are not only good players, they're mature players. They've been around the block. Xavier Thames, perhaps the best player, not only in the Mountain West, perhaps in the country, a fifth year senior transfer from Washington State, Josh Davis. A newcomer, monster on the glass, fifth year transfer. And Fish has put together not just a good staff, not just a good roster, but a team that plays so hard. Uh, we're going to have to be at our very best. Well, and they will defend you like the Cowboys do. The San Diego State Aztecs will defend you. A little more size than us, a little more speed, a little more athleticism but we got the double A and hopefully we'll have another great crowd in here. There you go. And uh, I know uh, we don't like doing this necessarily, but we will look ahead to Saturday at San Jose State. That one is a roadie and that's a three o'clock tap time mountain time, by the way. But uh, there you have the Spartans who you know are awfully darn hungry. You have to go play them on their floor. Well, and we had a tough game against them here. We really didn't separate until the last seven or eight minutes of that ball game. So I think our guys have a level of respect. They're a three point shooting team, which we found out game one. We need to do a good job that opened the door for some drives and they've given a lot of teams in our league problems, especially in their house. Yeah. Again, Tuesday night, the San Diego State Aztecs right here in the arena auditorium. That's a nine o'clock tip off. And then on Saturday afternoon, the Cowboys will be in San Jose, California to take on the San Jose State Spartans. Three o'clock mountain time, the tap time for that one. Well, that's going to do it for us. For the head coach, I'm Dave Walsh. This has been the Larry Shiat Show presented by Union Wireless. So long, everybody.